The Nile, the longest, most iconic river in the world. Stirring imaginations across cultures and nurturing life through much of Africa. The mighty Nile River runs deep and wide for over 6,400 kilometers. The end of its epic journey famously linked with ancient Egypt. But closer to its source is a different, less known river. In Uganda, the broad Nile suddenly shapeshifts. This is Murchison Falls, where the raging water squeezes through gaps as narrow as 23 feet. The Nile has thundered through here for millions of years, tumbling over 11 stories. It's one of the most powerful waterfalls in the world. The Nile's journey starts in Lake Victoria, Africa's biggest lake. The river and its tributaries run through 11 African countries before the Nile finally reaches the Mediterranean Sea. Along its path, it brings life across the northeastern part of the continent. This force of nature grows calm at the edges of the Murchison Falls, becoming a haven for some of the Nile's most delicate creatures. Butterflies make their home beside the violent waters, drawn to the nutrient-rich soil dampened by the misty falls. while lizards make a home in the surrounding rocks. This male Agama has one thing on his mind, a female Agama. She plays hard to get, at first. Then, strikes a pose to show interest. When another male turns up to challenge him, the dance for dominance begins.
He's what? A firm foot on her back makes this female his. She's not the only one. He'll mate with other females in his territory. He rules this part of the river. The falls are a stunning monument to the Nile's power. And a gateway to a new section of the river, the Victoria Nile. Here, the waters spread and grow calm, and the animals gather, some to feed on other animals. The male Nile crocodile the river's top predator is one of the largest species and one of the oldest. Unchanged for 200 million years. Ancient rulers of this domain. They're a deadly threat to anything that crosses their path. And today, that could mean each other. Breeding season has begun. A large male is out to prove that he rules this stretch of the river and the female. His rivals have other ideas. Nile crocodiles can reach six meters long and weigh a ton. They're well armored and mean tempered. This won't be the first showdown for these two old rivals. Bite marks form battle scars in his opponent's tough hide. Today's the final round, the last show of strength to prove his dominance. With the river cleared of rivals, he can now look for a mate. Just beyond the banks of the Victoria Nile, the land opens to extensive grasslands where other males also fight for mating rights. For this antelope, the breeding season is almost constant. These are male cob. They're competing for the best territories. In this mating arena, he'll battle every male. The prize is great. Almost all the females will visit to breed with the winner.
As one challenger is defeated, another takes his place. A desperate battle for the exhausted defender. The fight goes to the challenger. Taking center stage, he's now the dominant male. Though he's won this round, it isn't the end. The next challengers have already arrived. No time to rest. His battle to keep his mating rights will continue throughout his breeding life. Back at the river, the male crocodile has it so much easier. His victory means he can start courting right away. Brute strength turns into gentle crocodile behavior. One of Africa's toughest predators shows his softer side. He arches his back to look bigger and more attractive. Then he vibrates his muscles to create a hollow rumbling. It makes the water around him dance. The receptive females gather for his attention. They lavish him with displays of affection, gently caressing and rubbing against him. And they release an attractive scent that gets the male ready to mate. He'll eventually mate with several females, but for now, he has chosen one. They'll stay together for a few days. At the river's edge, a safe distance from the crocodiles, a feline mother-to-be is on a mission in the tall grasses. She's a serval, on the lookout for dense vegetation or abandoned burrows to make her den. There, she delivers three healthy kittens.
For now, they are blind, weigh just 250 grams, and are totally helpless. This normally solitary cat has a big adjustment to make. The grasses along the Nile and the water itself provide a world of plenty for many species of birds. One swamp dweller is as ancient as the Nile crocodile, a shoebill stork. At nearly a meter tall, she towers over the grasses. Her beak is almost 25 centimeters long. A shrewd hunter, she waits, frozen, for her prey just below the surface. Patience is her power. And once she spots her target, she moves in, ever so slowly. In the swamp's oxygen-poor water, fish must surface for air, giving the shoebill her chance. Not this time. The waiting game continues. Splashes grab her attention. She must remain focused. Patience has its rewards. She can enjoy her meal at leisure. A little further from the Nile's swampy banks, large herds of buffalo graze. Right now, they're trying to get their calves to the river. But an obstacle stands in their way. Hyenas. They can be a threat to the calves, but these hyenas have another target in mind. When spooked, Jackson's hartebeest can bolt at over 60 kilometers per hour. Though today, they're not in a hurry. 
rather than running. This male has a better strategy to protect his herd. Instead of speed, he'll use ingenuity. He approaches the predator, drawing attention to him and away from his young. While he stares down the hyena, his family can slip away. A bold move that buys him time and saves his herd. The buffalo have made it to the river to drink. Not far from where the female crocodile has climbed onto land. It's been two months since she made it. Now it's time to make a nest. First, she must find a suitable spot. She needs to be close to her home in the river. It will become the nursery for her newly hatched young yet far enough away so the nest won't get flooded or trampled. This is the spot. She starts digging a nest nearly half a meter deep. Shifting her weight to her front legs, her back legs do all the hard work. It's hours of toil, even for a crocodile this size. At last, she can rest and let nature take its course. She begins to lay her eggs. Finished, she gently pats down the soil. Careful not to break a single egg while covering the clutch completely.
the temperature of the eggs, controlled by their position in the nest, determines the sex of the hatchlings. A few degrees either way can be the difference between male and female. Her work's not done. Now starts her long vigil that will test her endurance. The serval mother is hunting to feed herself and her young, spending almost twice the time and energy than before she had kittens. This expert hunter is up to the task. She knows the river can be generous if she relies on her senses. Barbel fish coming to the surface catch her attention. Her kittens will be fine. When the sun comes up and temperatures soar to 35 degrees in the shade, even the heat-loving crocodile mother needs a break. She has no choice but to return to the cooling water every so often. Though leaving the nest means her eggs are vulnerable. and egg-loving predators watch her every move. A Nile monitor. One of Africa's largest lizards will eat practically anything he can sink his teeth into. The mother crocodile doesn't know her nest is in danger. The monitor's sensitive tongue easily picks up the scent of the nutritious eggs. grabs two and is on his way. He's one of the reasons crocodiles lay so many eggs. All the mother can do now is try to protect the rest. The Nile is so vast, it creates its own microclimates. Heat from the equator blasts the surface, pulling the Nile's moisture into the air. Clouds build quickly before rain arrives to quench the land 
along the Nile. Helping to create a totally different environment. The rainforest. Home to one of our closest living relatives, chimpanzees. Family groups can be as large as 100 chimps. Grooming is how they socialize and strengthen family ties. It's one of the many lessons the youngsters have to learn. Tree climbing is another one. And it does take practice. But like any youngster, the most important lesson is how to eat right. Young chimps count on their mothers to show them how it's done. The lessons last more than three years. Besides knowing what's good to eat, they also have to recognize what's poisonous. As they grow, chimps' lives become dominated by traveling to find food in the jungle pantry. The forest is their salad bowl. In their lifetime, Chimps can eat 300 species of plants, seeds, and fruits, spending most of their days doing it. In the rainforest, there's always food if you know where to look for it. Back on the banks of the Nile, life's adventure is just beginning for the baby crocs. The babies announce they're ready to hatch. Mom's long vigil is over. The hatchlings have their work cut out for them. They need to break free of the shell before they suffocate. They're helped by an egg tooth. Not really a tooth, but a hard piece of skin on their upper jaw. It slices the shell so the hatchling can push its way into the world. But sometimes, the tooth just doesn't cut it, and mom has to step in. 
cracking the shell in her mouth. An incredibly delicate operation for such powerful jaws. And that's just the start. Once the babies hatch, their mother needs to rush them to the safety of the river. And the quickest way to do that seems like the most dangerous. She gently picks up baby after baby between those enormous teeth. They instinctively seek shelter there. But she can only carry about 15 at a time. And that means some get left behind. The baby who struggled to hatch finds itself vulnerable once again. Giving the Nile monitor the perfect opportunity. He can see the baby. But this time, he'll have to get through mom. It's too risky. She can now take care of her baby. It takes her hours to get her brood safely to the water. For the hatchlings, the adventure has only just begun. As they learn to grow from defenseless babies into killer reptiles. The mother crocodile isn't the only one looking after multiple young. A little inland from the river, these Rothschild giraffes raise their calves. The mothers find strength in numbers. One takes control of the herd, while the rest feed nearby. They move as a herd, 
nursing, and browsing. But for these adolescents, tender necking hides a more serious intent. Their necks are the main weapon in fights for dominance. And these two are sizing each other up. The victor wins the right to mate. The males try to land blows with their horns. Attempting to dodge each other before getting ready to counter. Most fights don't lead to serious injury, but broken jaws, necks, and even death are possible. This fight is more of a practice run for when they are older. Back in her nursery in the river, the crocodile mother is surrounded by her growing family. She will spend about two years giving her babies their best start in life. They take to the water, eager to explore their new surroundings. They have to learn to feed for themselves without being eaten. The baby crocodile, who'd struggled before, is now the most confident amongst his brothers and sisters. He aims big, but he's not as ferocious as he thinks he is. At least, not yet. He'll get the hang of it. Camouflage. Stealth. Precision. baby crocodile becomes a hunter. His siblings still have a way to go. Life flourishes along the Nile. Seasons come and go, but the river remains, supporting each new generation.
the servile mother has given her young a good start. She'll nurse them for a few more months and remain by their side for a full year. As the Nile flows, its immense power carves a slightly different, ever-changing course. But one feature of this river doesn't change. The mother crocodile played her part. Two years have passed, and her baby, now grown, carries her legacy. The latest in an ancient line of undisputed rulers of the Nile.